What up guys, welcome to this YouTube channel. Today I'll be talking about the high prices of insulin. This problem has become more and more prevalent with prices increasing 600% over the last 20 years. Recently, the Senate took notice of this issue and passed a bill that capped insulin prices, but only for people with insurance. This video will shed light on the issues behind the rising costs and hopefully raise awareness about this topic so that people can vote for laws to help fix this problem or even donate to various causes that will make life easier for those who need insulin. So why are insulin prices so problematic? Well, here's some not so fun facts. Did you know that 14% of people who use insulin in the US spend 40% of their post subsidence income on insulin? The average list price of insulin increased 11% annually from 2001 to 2018. Also, 1.3 million adults or 16.5% of those who need insulin ration it due to the high price. It's not like the problem can't be solved. Countries besides the U.S. seem to have no problem keeping their insulin prices under control. According to the U.S. government, a study shows that in 2018, America has the highest prices of insulin in the world, with it costing around $99 per unit, while in other countries, it would only cost around $9. So why can't America seem to lower our prices? What are these prices doing to people, and what can we do to help? Well, that's what we'll be discussing today, but first, what even is insulin? Well, insulin is a life-saving drug that helps many people with diabetes regulate their blood sugar level. In 1889, two German researchers by the name of Oskar Manowski and Joseph von Mirig discovered that dogs would develop symptoms of diabetes if their pancreas gland was removed. This encouraged the theory that pancreas was where insulin, not yet known by its name, was produced. In fact, insulin was not named until 1910 when the English physiologist Sir Edward Albert Sharpie <laughs> figured out that only one chemical was missing from people with diabetes, which he decided to call insulin. However, it wasn't until 1921 when Frederick Banting and Charles Best, a young surgeon and his assistant, figured out how to remove insulin from the pancreas and were able to temporarily treat a dog with diabetes by giving it insulin. In 1922, a diabetic 14-year-old boy's life was saved when he received the first dose of insulin, which balanced his sugar levels within a day. Soon commercially sold insulin became popular for those with diabetes and synthetic insulin was soon invented. So how does that affect us now? There is no cure for diabetes, but in 1923, a patent for insulin was sold for $3, or about $42 in today's money, in an effort to ensure insulin was accessible to anybody who needed it. Unfortunately, insulin is insanely expensive. The price of insulin has constantly risen, and in 2016, insulin costs $5,705 a year, or up to $250 a vial in the U.S. Keep in mind that human insulin cost just $14 per vial in 1982. In 1990, Medicaid paid only $2.26 to $4.43 per unit for insulin. Even today, it is it only costs around $10 to make one vial. In 2022, a study found that on average, those who needed the insulin ended up paying an average of $1,000 a month and more for those who need more than two or three vials. This is an insane cost for a drug people can't go without. So what happened? How did the price of insulin jump from being cheap to being insanely high today? Well, it is because of three manufacturers, Eli Lilly, Novo Nordstick, and Sonify, the only insulin producers in the US. These three manufacturers have patents on insulin allowing them to basically control the market. By raising prices at the same time, these companies can force people to buy insulin at ridiculous rates. In fact, back in 1941, Eli Lilly did the same thing with the help of two other companies and was sued for, and I quote, conspiring to unlawfully bring about arbitrary uniform and non-competitive -com prices for insulin and to prevent normal competition in the sale of the drug. None of the companies ever confessed to any wrongdoing but faced a fine of $5,000 each in 1941. Later, one of the two companies Eli Lilly worked for, Sharp and Dom, merged with Merck and is now the sole distributor of insulin for Novo Nordstick. These companies are seemingly doing the same things today, but to an even greater extent. Despite the manufacturers of insulin only costing around $10, the prices keep going up. So you might be wondering, haven't these companies' patents for selling insulin expired yet? Shouldn't the market be open for others to sell insulin, thus dropping the price? Well, according to Dr. Kevin Ricks, a physician at the University of Alabama, these companies use a method known as evergreening, a process in which drug companies make incremental improvements to their products 
that can extend the life of their patents. This means that not only do these companies have patents on the insulin that works the best, but by continually improving the drug, they can make sure no other companies start selling it at a lower price. Therefore, these companies can completely control the market and charge whatever they want for insulin. Because of these high prices, millions of Americans are forced to choose between medication and rent. In fact, many personal stories to this effect have been published in newspapers. For example, take Alex Smith, who at age 23 is diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. At age 26, he is kicked off his mom's medical insurance. As a young restaurant manager making around $35,000 a year, the insurance Alec could get is too expensive, so he decides instead to pay for his insulin medication out of his pocket and search for a job that includes insurance. Unfortunately, Alec isn't able to pay this price out of hand and starts rationing his medication. On June 27th, Alex is found dead in his apartment due to complications from not taking his medicine. Of course, Alec isn't the only one, and although most cases aren't extreme as death, NPR reports that one in four Americans is forced to skip or ration doses of insulin, and that's life-threatening. NBC News notes that one in five Americans ration or skip insulin. Rationing isn't the only problem, and of 7 million diabetic people in America, 27% say that affording insulin has impacted their daily life. Take Laura Marston, who at 36 has had to sell all her possessions twice over to afford the cost of insulin medication, while also being able to take care of her dog, pay her rent, and drive a car. So what's being done about this problem? Right now the solution people have come up with to this issue is the Affordable Insulin Now Act. This act, which is sponsored by the Senator Raphael Warnock and passed by the American government, it is an act that will cap insulin prices at $35 a month for those with Medicare or private insurance. Excitingly, this act has passed in, as of October 1st, 2022 for those with Medicare and January 1st, 2023 for those with private insurance. This act is now in effect. This will, of course, greatly help those who take insulin as now those with insurance won't have to pay an insane amount just to live. It might seem as if this problem has been solved, but there are some major drawbacks of this Affordable Insulin Now Act. The problem is that it does nothing to help those without insurance. This means that millions of Americans who need insulin but don't have insurance still have to pay these unfairly high prices just to get the medication they need to live. Additionally, this doesn't really solve the root of the problem, which is Big Pharma unjustly conspiring to raise the price of the drug. So what can you do to help? Well, keep in mind this issue when you vote, making sure to try to find politicians that support lowering prices or helping those in need with medical matters. Some great examples are the politicians who sponsored or co-sponsored the Affordable Insulin Now Act. Additionally, try to raise awareness about this problem, even if it's just telling your friends and family about it. If you would like, you can also donate to places such as influza.org, which helps people get insulin free of cost. Of course, donate to places mm -hmm. like JDRF and Diabetes Research, which can help scientists find a cure for diabetes and make insulin unnecessary. Thank you so much for watching this video. It means a lot. This is the first video, so please uh, just drop a subscribe, maybe a like, and of course a comment.